Hello, Trinity Channel viewers and all that is watching on the satellite and Facebook and YouTube as well. Thank you guys for tuning in. Today we have another great show on the truth and lies. I am the host of this show, The Truth and Lies, and my name is Eddie Youssef. Uh, so on today's topic, we'll be discussing the scientific proofs of the Quran, or is there scientific proofs in the Quran? So uh, the phone number to call here is 248-416-1300. The phone lines will open in about 15 to 20 minutes. We will take the first 15 to 20 minutes talking about some of the things, some of the scientific proofs that are available for us in the Quran. Of course, we will be on the Christian side debunking them, and we have with us Ahmed Nadir, who will, uh, on his Islamic side, try to prove them or make sure that they exist. Also, in, uh, via Skype, we have with us uh, Brother Jay Smith. Uh, each one of them, Nadir Ahmed and Jay Smith, will give us about 30 seconds to one minute bio, a biography of themselves to tell us a little bit more about what they do and their ministry. Brother Jay, welcome to the show. Thanks, Eddie. It's good to be here. Good to be here. Uh, go ahead and give us about a minute and tell us more about yourself and what you do. Great. No, well, I have been working uh, in Islam no, about maybe 37 years. I have been uh, as an apologist and a polemicist for the last 25. I am now in the United States. I was 25 years in Britain, and that's where I would engage with Muslims weekly at Speaker's Corner, getting up on the ladder, taking on sometimes hundreds of Muslims at a time. It was fun. It was great. Now I'm back in the States. I'm not retired. People don't think I'm retired. I don't know why people do. But I'm still engaging with Islam, as I'm doing tonight, with Nadir Ahmed. This is the first time I've ever met him, uh, first time I've ever engaged with him. So I'm looking forward to this time, this time, the next hour and a half at least. Nadir Ahmed, uh, thank you for being with us via Skype as well. Go ahead and tell us a little bit more about yourself and uh, tell us more about you and what you do. Sure. Um, so my name is Nadir Ahmed, and I've uh, researched a lot of the uh, claims for the miraculous nature of the Quran. Um, and I've come to the conclusion that the Quran is indeed a scientific miracle, but not only myself, but many other people um, as well. I've also looked at a lot of the claims for the alleged scientific errors of the Quran, and I've researched them, and I found them to be uh, flawed at best. And so what I can uh, confidently tell you tonight is that the Quran is a book which is has no scientific errors, and there's many statements in there which scientists have just found out recently but yet they were mentioned in the Quran 1,400 years ago. So that's what I've been researching. I've also had many debates and discussions. You can Google my name just to find them on YouTube. And this is the first time I'm meeting Jay Smith, so um, it's a pleasure meeting you, and I'm sure we'll have a very good, fruitful discussion tonight. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that. Now, before we get started, let's go ahead and share with us, uh, with the viewers as well, and with the panelists, the uh, time frame. Each one of us will have four minutes to speak. I, as a Christian, and Brother Jay, as a Christian, four minutes for me, four minutes for him. That we equal up to eight minutes for Brother Nalir. And he will either share what he has to say or debunk what we are trying to say. And we'll keep everything on track as far as the uh, topic goes. If any one of us tends to get off the, the topic, I will politely call you back to the topic at hand. Now, we'll come to Brother Nadir. Uh, on the last episode, or maybe the previous episode before that, uh, Brother Nadir, I remember that you made a statement uh, about Jay. And we invited Jay here per your request, because on that show, if you'd watch it again, you stated that you know, you'd want him to come on the show so that you can discuss these things with him. So before we even get into the science of the Quran, uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit more about that? Because I believe that you stated that Brother Jay uh, had uh, quoted or said that he had uh, read or said that the Bible is corrupt. So let's go ahead and, and talk about that for a minute, Brother Nadir. Sure. That was inside the Shabir Ali debate 
in which he walked, he went over the actual corruption of the Bible. J, J. Smith actually pointed out John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11, which he believes is not a, um, the, an authentic part of the New Testament. He talked about how the Bible was changed in that debate. And it's online for you to watch. Uh, let's go ahead and give Brother Jay a chance to respond to this and uh, provide a defense of himself. Actually, uh, Nadir, you've done a whole video on just this very thing. I went and looked at it today, and I was fascinated. You quote me from October 15, 2006. That's 13 years ago, uh, where I said it's a the video called Is the Bible Corrupt? And you put a clip on there for a few seconds of me saying that Muslims claim that we have corrupted the Bible, that we have changed, added, manipulated, and that we have taken it away. And then you're claiming that somehow in 2014, I changed my mind and I came out in 2014 with Shabir Ali saying, oh, actually, there are some, there are about 40 verses that probably are not found in the original Greek manuscript. And I referred to Mark chapter uh uh, chapter 16, verse 9 to 20. It's actually John chapter 7, verse 53 to John 8, 11. And it's first John chapter 5, verse 7. And you say, ah, so either Jay is lying or he has changed his mind. Uh, go back to that video again and look at the clip that you actually put in your video, Nadia. I, I don't say, uh, I, very clear, it's not saying that I'm claiming that it was corrupted in that video. I'm saying Muslims claim we have corrupted it. And then I go right into and say, Muslims, be careful. If you read the, if you watch the rest of the video, be careful about claiming that because you're going to have to go back to your own Quran. You're going to have to go back to this book. You're going to have to go back to Surah 10, 94, chapter 21, verse 7, chapter 4, verse 136, chapter 5, verse 46 and 47, and also verse 68, which says over and over and over again that the Bible is not corrupt. Be careful of what you claim, Muslims. That's what the whole video was about. Now, what you didn't do also, you didn't go back and look at the very next month. If you look at another video I put up on November 17th, 2006, it, almost a month after the video you're quoting, that whole video is on those variants. I talk about those variants. Why did you look at that video? I refer to Mark 16, verse 9 to 20. This is in 2006 I did this. I refer to John 7, 50, 53 to 8, 11. I refer to 1 John chapter 5. Go back and look at your material before you start telling that, saying that I have lied or that I have changed my mind or that I'm not honest. Please, 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 don't quote that anymore. Now, And what I would like you to do, Nadir, so now you have seen that you have misquoted me, you have misquoted that video, you have basically besperched my name. I want you now to go put up another video after today saying that you were wrong, that you actually misquoted me on that video, that I did not change my mind between 2006 and 2014. I have always said that there are these variants. We are very transparent about that. What I said to Shabir Ali and everybody else there in the debate in 2014 was nothing new. You should have known that. Be careful what you throw at me, because I'm going to throw it right back at you. But I really would like you now to go and correct that and also tell your viewers that you were incorrect on that video. Would you do that, please, for me now? No, absolutely not. I think I was right. I think uh, what you're doing is you're playing with words here. You say, you said John chapter 8, or the whole story of the woman caught in the act of adultery. This is not an authentic part of the New Testament. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. We don't know if it is or not. I have no, no idea. No, what we're saying it's not you said found no, in the it's not. Greek I, manuscripts. I, okay, it's my turn. But it's I've my been turn saying to talk, that Jay. since 2006. Why have I, where have I changed my mind on that? Brother Jay, you asked the question. Let him answer it. Go ahead and answer it, Brother oh. Nadir, and then we can get okay. into the topic. Let's, yeah, let's get to the topic. I understand. Um, no, you before know, we go uh, on, please, before sentence. Eddie, are you aware of the fact I've always said this? Are you aware of the fact that I said it a month even after that debate you're quoting? Nadia, What's that was new you. here? Why are you uh, making these videos saying that I've lied? Okay, first Please of all, be I never said... What you what, say about we, me in public, if you're going to say it, for heaven's sakes, quote you, the video correctly. Hold, hold on, Jay. So now, let let him back. respond. I, I, you let can't him, do it now, but maybe let, next let him tomorrow respond, or Brother next Jay. week. Please go back and look at that debate. Certainly, I'm not sorry, the video, and see what I'm saying there. I'm being very clear that Muslims need to be careful about stipulating that our Bible is corrupted. If they are not, if they don't first go and look at their own Quran, be careful to, be do, to do that because you need to look at your Quran and see if your Quran allows you to say that.
All right, okay, Jay, sure. let, let, let him okay. respond and, and give him a couple of minutes. Go ahead, uh, Brother Nadir, take a couple of minutes in response to what Jay said, and then we'll get into the topic because we're, we're getting off topic. Yeah. yeah, okay, so see, Jay, when you say that the story of the woman caught in the act of adultery, which I believe is uh, John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11, you say this is some kind of interpolation or some kind of fabrication. It's really not a part of the original New Testament. Now, you got millions of people who, or billions of people probably, who believe in this. So what, this is clearly an addition which you are admitting into the New Testament. So we call that corruption. You might call it something different, but we call it corruption. So now, you made the claim that the Quran teaches that the Bible is uncorrupt and a pristine document. So let's do this. Uh, I really want to get onto the topic of science today, but I will challenge you for a discussion on that very topic, what the Quran says about the Bible, corrupt or uncorrupt. Uh, maybe we could do that on the ABN show later. And we can, let's together, you and I, look at the video, and you're going to see, first of all, I never called you a liar, I never said you're deceiving people, but you did change your opinion. Because when you started debating in the 1999s, I never heard you say that. I never heard you say, oh, by the way, this part of the New Testament, no, it's not from God, or it's, it's just a fabrication. But you did your research, you did your studies, and now you change your opinion. We're like, oh, okay, yeah, there are portions of the New Testament which really don't belong there. Okay, so let's, we can do, in the Bible, all this stuff, we can do it, but let's get to the topic of the scientific miracles, if without further ado. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, we are completely fine with that. We'll give Brother Jay a chance to respond to this on some later episodes. Because if you're going to claim something about another person, here he is in person, or via Skype in this case, and he's trying to respond to what you have said. So he's only trying to defend himself. After all, this is a man's reputation. I'm sure, Brother Nadir, that you would do the same. With that said, let's get into the topic at hand. The science of the Quran. Now, uh, Muslims claim to us over and over again that there is a lot of scientific proof in the Quran. I, as a Christian who reads Arabic, and Arabic is my native tongue, have not seen this yet. So let's go ahead and discuss it, uh, starting off with the two C's that do not mix. So I had a, a Muslim friend, and right at first, this Muslim friend was telling me that there is this beautiful miracle of the Quran where the two seas do not mix. That is the salt water sea and the fresh water sea do not mix. And he was quoting uh, the Quran chapter 55 verses 19 through 22, which reads, He has let loose the two seas converging together with a barrier between them. They do not break through. Then, which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? Out of them comes pearls and corals. So, we have a couple of implications here that these two seas do not mix together and pearls and corals come from that. Now I find a couple of mistakes in that, if not more. In 2553, it implies the same thing of the Quran. So um, there are mistakes like I've said already here. So in verse 20, we read that between them is a barrier that do not break through. That is not what is saying in the Arabic language. I said uh, that I speak Arabic and I read and write it. That is not what it's saying in the Arabic language. The, this means that the salt water and, and uh, the fresh water, they do not mix, is the, what verse 20 is saying. However, that word in Arabic is uh, barzakh, and barzakh means a land barrier and not sea barrier. That means there's a land between them. But if we take a look at this phenomena, which I'll tell you exactly where it's at, uh, the two waters supposedly do not mix. But from what we know scientifically, it is only a current that goes through, and it will eventually mix later. So, if in case you're wondering if my word of, or my definition of the word barzakh, which means uh, land barrier, is not true, Tafsir Ibn Kathir zeroes in on this. Uh, and he says about the verse that we just discussed, he prevents them from meeting by placing as land as barrier. So Tafsir Ibn Kathir says the land is a barrier. And he's, he put that between them. That is Allah put that between them. And that verse is also saying that there are two seas there. Well, really it's not two seas. It's only one sea. And in it there's fresh water and salt water that is not mixing. 
So one is salty and one is fresh that is not mixing in one sea. But the Quran says that there are two seas. So there's fallacy number two. Uh, the third one is uh, these two, as I've said earlier, will eventually mix together. Salt water does eventually mix together with the fresh water. And if we wanted to know where this is at, this is called the Strait of Gibraltar. And it's located so uh, the southeast southern coast of Spain and the northern coast of Morocco. And if you wanted to see this phenomenon, it's quite beautiful. Uh, last, th uh, this is, in my opinion, not a miracle because this was common knowledge throughout the land. Muhammad was simply stating what God had told him here. And what God had told him is, hey, there are these two seas that do not mix. So God, who built the sea, who made the sea, doesn't know that there's only one sea that is not mixing together, does know that the fresh water and salt water eventually mix together, but he's saying it doesn't. And uh, this is uh, uh, something that, is not, uh, th that has not been known before. So if Muhammad had claimed that this was something new, then we might say, okay, we believe it. This is a topic that uh, we've never heard of before. Therefore, he's the one who discovered it, and there is some sort of phenomena in this. Lastly, because my time is running low, uh, the corals and the, the pearls. I don't know about the pearls, but corals need salt water to grow. But God is saying, Allah is saying that pearls and corals grow in the sea. So there are about four mistakes in this alone. So we'll, we'll go to Brother Jay next to talk about this for about four minutes, and then we'll give it to Nadir. Or Nadir, would you like us to go to you? I see you yeah. pointing at the screen. All right, Brother Nadir, yeah. you'll take the next four minutes, and then we'll go to Jay for this. Go ahead. Right, so we have, we're supposed to be having equal time here. So, okay, good. So let me see if I got your four alleged errors. The first one is you're saying that it's mixing and salt water and fresh water is mixing. The second one, you're saying that the land, the barzakh is talking about a barrier. And then you're saying that something about coral only grows in, in salt water or something like that. Is that. Do I understand you correctly? Did I miss anything? You've missed, you've missed one thing, which was this was not a miracle because it was common knowledge. It was known to the people before Muhammad. Okay, not a miracle. Okay, so let me go ahead. You said you speak Arabic, and I know you do. Actually, you can speak a lot. You can speak Arabic a lot better than I can. Uh, but if you actually read the verse, chapter 55, verse 20, you know in the Arabic language the word for mixing is yachtalit, something like that. But this word is is yanbari. Now, this is from the word bara, and what that means is transgression. Now, if you were to take that root verb and just paste it into Google, or, in Google Images, you're not going to find anything to do with mixing. Rather, you're going to probably going to find some bad images coming up because bari uh, also refers to uh, Im sexual immorality, just basically a really bad transgression. So the whole argument about mixing is is defeated right there because it, you speak Arabic, so you should be able to read this and see the word la yan. La yan bariyan, which is referring to transgress, not mixing. The whole thing about coral, this verse says nothing about salt water and fresh water. It, it simply says that there are two seas. So not only does it say nothing about mixing, but the verse just says there are just two seas and there's a barrier between them. Whether this is a miracle or not, I'm not actually presenting this as my evidence for the miraculous nature of the Quran, so I'm just going to let that go. Uh, we have other evidences which I feel are a lot more stronger, although there, there is a good point on that. Um, not mixing, um, two Cs, and you said that there's only one C. Well, that's your interpretation. You're saying that there's... You see, the topic of tonight is what the Quran... Uh, it, can we find something in the Quran which, agree, which disagrees with established modern science? And that you will never find in the Quran. This book, I have a Quran right over here. You will never find a scientific error. But there are definitely conflicts and contradictions with your own thinking when you define, you know, I think there's just only one C out there. Yep, yep. <laughs> well, yeah, sure, the Quran's going to contradict that. There, there's no question about that. So your whole claim to um, 
scientific error falls just falls to pieces right here. So I got a minute and 30 seconds left. So let me tell you why the Quran, what is the evidence for the Quran being miraculous? Number one, there are statements in the Quran which scientists have only discovered today, yet they were mentioned 1400 years ago inside the book. That's number one. Number two, there are no scientific errors in the Quran, and that is something which is astonishing. Because there might be, oh, I don't know, dozens if not hundreds of statements in the Quran, which talk about geology to um, oceanography to all different branches of science to biology, yet not a single verse disagrees with modern science. And that is a miracle because you'd expect to find hundreds. All the other books have scientific errors, yet the Quran. Um, and the third miraculous nature of the Quran is that the Quran corrects the scientific errors of the Bible. And it is astonishing. For example, both the, the Bible and the Quran, they talk about something as small as a mustard seed. That's in the Bible, that's in the New Testament. You'll also find that in the old inside the Quran. It looks like one is copying from the other. But science has been able to answer that in, and with an emphatic no, because the Bible says that the mustard seed is the smallest seed, but you will not find that in the Quran. All right, so, Nadir, your, your, your time is up, and we're, what we're trying to do is stay on topic. We're not trying to go to the Bible. We're, we're talking about the scientific miracles of the Quran. Uh, so for the mustard seed that Jesus is mentioning for the Palestinians, and majority of them were farmers, they would know that this is the smallest of all seeds that they know in their world, obviously, because there is a geographical historical context. But let's try to stick with the topic, please, Brother Nadir. With that said, let's go ahead and give it to Brother Jay in response to what he said, or you'd like to bring some of the uh, scientific Quranic errors yourself. Brother Jay, go ahead. Yeah, it's been terrific. Uh, thanks very much. It's great. This is the first time I've ever had a discussion or a debate on this very topic, looking at the scientific proofs in the Quran. Uh, to find out more of where, uh, what Nadir was coming from, I went and looked at his video today. Uh, he goes, it's, if you look on his video from 2008, uh, he, and I would encourage all you to do, he looks at eight different scientific proofs in the Quran that shows that the Quran must be from God, because every one of these eight Nobody, nobody could have known about them before the, the 7th century. Absolutely nobody. He, and he went over and he just stressed that point so much. And this is proof that Muhammad uh, could not have known this. Therefore, only God could have given him this. And that's why this book is from God, he says. Now, I, what I like to do is just go right through every one of those eight. This is the first time I've seen it. I've only had today to look at it, but I can see so many problems because these are the same things we used to get at Speaker's Corner. Let's start with the first one in chapter 16, verse 68, Surah 16, verse 68, and he talks about bees, that the, the feminine form, Nahla, in Arabic uh, is used, and because it's feminine form, uh, therefore, Muhammad, we are now know that the working bees are all, are, all the working bees are feminine, uh, the Really, the, the male bees are rather useless. They don't do much at all. And so how could Muhammad have known the sex of the bees to have known this? Well, the answer is very simple. And Eddie, you can help me out on this, because if you take a look at the word nakla, it is always feminine. It has always been feminine. When you're talking about bees, you can only use feminine. <laughs> if you're bringing in a human into it, then you bring it into the masculine. But because of the fact it's bees, it will always remain feminine. Feminine. So this is nothing a miracle. It's the only thing that, not Muhammad, I don't think Muhammad had anything to do with the Quran. We can get into that in another debate. Whoever wrote the Quran using proper Arabic would have only used this one word. This is not a miracle. Listen, in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 18, you also find that bees are referred to there, and they are devora. That is also feminine. So Isaiah, writing in 800 BC, that's a that's a good, well, uh, that's a good 1,500 years before Muhammad, or not, sorry, Muhammad had nothing to do, before the writers of the Quran also used the feminine. Is that a miracle? No, because that's the only word that was available to a Hebrew writer at that time. Aristotle, in 350, you went and you just poo-pooed Aristotle. You didn't say much to say about it. I don't go to Aristotle. I'd rather go to the Bible. But be careful, neither the Bible nor the writers of the Quran created a miracle here because they only had one word available to them, the feminine form. That does not mean that all bees are feminine. All the worker bees are feminine. It's just the word that was available to him. 
Uh, let's go on to Surah 89, Ayah 7, where you then talk about this city called Iram, and that there is no reference to the city until the Ebla tablets were discovered in 1978. There is a, There was a National Geographic uh, article, and that was your source for that, a National Geographical article, page 736. Now, my response to that is, what did the National Geographical article say that Ebla referred to? Because it was only, I was fascinating to me that when I went back to the National Geographic article and I looked at it, they were just claiming that this word Iram is found in the in the Quran. That's all they're claiming. They don't even know what Iram is. It could be a people, it had. it could be a place, it's fascinating that the verse before it in verse 6 talks about Ud, and the verse after it in verse uh, 9 talks about Thamud. So it's actually referring to Ad, Iram, and Thamud. Well, take a look where Ad, Iram, and Thamud are. Or look where Ad and Thamud are. They're 600 miles further north than wherever Muhammad would have lived. So this is actually a much more, if you want Brother to talk Jay, about your, your time is coming to an Iram end. Is, I would ask you another question. You're, I'm sorry, your time is coming to an end. We're trying to stay fair on the time here. Uh, so we're, we're, I'll, I'll take it from here, and then we'll go to uh, Brother Nadir. Now, uh, the, what Brother Jay was just mentioning, and by the way, let's open up the phone lines. The phone number is 248-416-1300. We'd like to take your questions, and if there are any Muslims that would love to challenge us on what we're saying, or any Christians that would love to challenge Nadir on what he's saying, please go ahead and give us a call, and uh, let's see how we can answer it or help you out in any way. So if you have any comments, objections, any questions, go ahead and call us. So about the bees, Brother Nadir, uh, what Brother Jay was just reading is in chapter 16, verses 68 through 69. And he's right about the feminine saying as bees. Not only is it is it bees known in the feminine, <coughs> excuse me, uh, but also the namla, namla, which is an ant. We don't call it nemel, nemel is a plural. Namla is for uh, the female way of saying an ant. And that's how the Quran mentions it as well. So the fact that this is a female is not a miracle at all. It was only based on the Arabic language and how it's written. Now, but there, there's a problem that Brother Jay may have overlooked, or maybe he did it on purpose is that um, in verse 68 and 69, God, Allah, is telling the bee, eat, kuli is the word, from all the fruits and follow uh, that which comes, the ways of your Lord, that which comes down for you. So God, Allah here, is telling the bee to eat from the fruits. Well, really, the bee doesn't eat and fill his belly from the fruit. That's a scientific error, or that's an error that Allah has made. But this is the same Allah who made the bees. Uh, Sahih al-Bukhari is recorded as well in talking about this. Uh, Muhammad loved honey, all right? And so he used to eat it a lot. So in Sahih al-Bukhari, there was a person who came to him and said uh, that, I'm, I'm sick, I, I have a disease, uh, can, can you please cure me? Uh, in, in, by telling me about something about the honey here. And this Muhammad says, go ahead and eat some honey. So he went and ate some honey, and he came back. And when he came back, he said, hey, my stomach still hurts. Muhammad tells him again, go and eat some honey, because honey is supposed to be good for you. That's one of the miracles of Allah or of Muhammad. It is good for you, but it doesn't cure, in, in this case, in Sahih al-Bukhari. And then he came back again, and he said, hey, I ate some more honey, and my stomach still is not cured. Muhammad says, your stomach is lying. And after he said, your stomach is lying, this person out of fear said, you know what? My stomach is now cured. Thank you for telling me the honey. He recovered. Thank you for telling me about the honey. And he recovered. This is Sahih al-Bukhari 5715. All right. Uh, another one, which is Allah claiming that bees eat from the fruit that I mentioned earlier. When in fact, they don't eat from the fruit. They eat nectars. They eat uh, from the nectars or, or they take from the nectars. They collect it and from the nectar of the flower, and they spit it out into their hives. They actually vomited it out. So Allah made a mistake with this, and by saying, go ahead and eat from the fruit, when in actuality, they have nothing to do with fruit. They're just going and collecting nectars. And if we have any calls, which I believe we have a call now, uh, if we have any calls, I will pause either one of us that's talking, or all three, or anyone, uh, any of the three of us that's talking. So we have a call now, and it's from Brother Alex. Alex, who uh, 
is your question for if you have one or if you have a comment or objection, go for it. Oh, hi. A question for Nadir. Can you hear me? Can you please speak louder? Hi, my name, my question is for Nadir. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. What's your question, brother? Okay. So, uh, the question is for Nadir. It's Surah 27, the end, verse 18. It says here, then, uh, and uh, speaking. Now, he said, O oh, ants, enter your houses, that the Solomon and his host may not crush you while they are, they don't know. So, could you please explain me in that situation that what's going on here? When uh, uh, ant, well, we have a situation when Allah gives Solomon opportunity to understand the norm, and then, and a so that miracle, uh, Suleiman was able to understand what, n what the ant is normally talking, and they're talking about the human issues. They're talking about what's going on in Israel. They're talking about what's going on in Jerusalem. The ant was able to recognize king of Israel. He recognized that his name is Solomon. He recognized the army behind him, and he's communicating it, this information to his uh whatever ant in the ant house. So, Thank you, Brother Alex, for your question. Uh, Brother Nadir, did you hear the question clearly, or should I quote to you the passage that he's uh, talking about, 27, 18, and 19? I heard the question. Um, so you guys took about almost seven minutes there. Uh, so uh, it, I have to respond now to Jay, and i got to also respond to you. And I think we agreed that we are going to have equal time in this discussion. So, Eddie, I'll just ask that you please... Uh, Keep track of the time. Now, the the I, I think one of the problems here is, Jay, you're going back to some debate I had on 2008, and that's fine. We can definitely talk about that. But the evidence which I am presenting today for the miraculous nature of the Quran, and this is not off topic, this is a miracle, I'll explain it to you, show you how it's relevant, is that if you look at the scientific errors in the Bible, why are they not in the Quran? Like, for example, the mustard seed. So we find this time and time again where if Muhammad is not a true prophet, that means he was copying from the Bible. It has to be because they talk about the same thing. But take example for that mustard seed. If he was copying that analogy, the Bible says, and this is the smallest seed, or I'm sorry, it's as small as a mustard seed. And the Quran says, and here's as small as a mustard seed. It's clear one book is copying from the other if Muhammad is not a true prophet. But the fact that the scientific error, that the mustard seed is the smallest seed which you plant in the ground, that's missing from the Quran. That's the miracle I'm presenting to you of why we say the Quran is a scientific miracle. Now that's just one. You can say, okay, Muhammad got lucky, that's fine. We can, but when we see a continuous chain of this, okay, of the scientific errors being omitted, we got to start asking that question. But so we're going to ask Jay Smith to comment on that just a second. But let me go uh, to Eddie and I'm going to, it looks like I'm debating both of you here and that's fine. Uh, Eddie, you said that bees don't eat fruit. Uh, let me ask you a question. Did you ever Google that? Do bees eat fruit? Just a quick yes or no question. Yes, yes, I've Googled it. Okay, because I've Googled it, and I actually got pictures of bees eating fruit. Bees do eat fruit. If you like, I can share my desktop, and we can Google together if you like. So, and this is the, again, this is the astonishing nature of the Quran. Now, the, there's been a lot of discussion of that, the, that the nummo, or, you know, the, the insects are female by nature of the Quran. That's right. That's fine. But the miracle is you got this female uh, B, but you ascribe, and let's say insects are always female. Almost all the time they're female. That's fine. But you ascribe the correct role to that female B. So there's a huge probability of getting this wrong. So now let's read the verse together and let's call and let's see how many scientifically correct statements we're going to find in there. It says, and your Lord inspired the B to take yourself 
uh, among the mountains, houses, and among the trees. So which is the bee which leaves the, the actual hive? It's a female bee. There you go, it gave the right role. So the bee female is constant, that's fine, but ascribe the right role, then it goes on. Then eat from all the fruits. Do bees eat fruit? Absolutely, if you like, I can share my desktop and we can do that Google search. There's pictures of them eating grapes and rotten fruit everywhere. Number two, uh, and then emerges from their bellies a drink. Wait a second, does honey come from their bellies? Today, science has confirmed honey does come from the bellies. So, and and they actually, it's called a bee a bee stomach, I believe, is what the is what they call. It. There's like two different stomachs, and one's called the bee tummy, uh, and that's where the, the the honey comes from. So now we're at three, and in it is a healing for the people. So, this talking about that there is shifa, there is a healing in honey. Now that was known by many different peoples of the past. So the issue that you got that in there is not a big deal. But what is a big deal? You just made four statements. Every single one of them is scientifically correct, and that's not possible. Because if you're guessing, if you're guessing at this, you're going to get it wrong. Okay, Brother Nadir, right. we, have a, we have a call. Yes. I'm going to give you three more minutes. I've been keeping time. Three more minutes is your time to go after this call. I think this is a call from Marwan. Marwan, who is your question to? Or if you have a comment or objection, please keep it to about 30 seconds. Go ahead. Good evening. Uh, my question for three of you. Okay, my question is, the Quran in your hands is the uh, uh, Quran Osman bin Affan. And Osman bin Affan, he burned about seven, eight, ten maybe uh, uh, Quran. And there is a Quran for uh, uh, Ali bin Abi Talib, is a Quran for Aisha, is a Quran, uh, uh, a Catholic Quran. So, what kind of Quran you're talking about? And thank you very much. Sure. Uh, Brother Nadir, I'll let you go first. Take about a minute answering that, and then Jay would answer that, and then I would answer that for about one minute. Then we'll get back to you for the rest of your three minutes, for the rest of your time. Yeah, this is all off topic about how many, if there's other versions of the Quran. Let's stick to the Quran and science. I appreciate the call, but we can debate that later. Now, I believe I only had three, uh, three minutes. Well, I, I'm counting. You guys had over seven minutes. So that's why I'm saying, Eddie, you got to keep time so we can have this a fair discussion. I still got minutes. so much. As a matter of fact, I'm giving you, you nine great. minutes, Nadir. I'm giving you nine minutes in total, brother. Let's start keeping time. Four minutes, four minutes. So let me do my four minutes and then give each uh, each person a, a fair amount of time. Okay. So now, let me start my little clock here. Okay. So um, this is four scientifically correct statement. You cannot make in the desert four scientifically correct statement without any scientific error. That's not possible, okay? Now, some people may say, okay, well, honey was known, you know, maybe by different groups of people back then. Well, yeah, that's true. But if that's, if Muhammad is copying from some other source, that's a very dumb thing to do because you're gonna get caught. You're gonna copy those scientific errors into your book. No man can make four scientifically correct statement. Number one, the female bee leaves the house. Bees eat fruit, which even I didn't know that. You didn't know that, Eddie. Major 95% of the world don't even know that today. Yet the Quran was right. And that the honey comes from the bellies. And we know there's a, there's a honey stomach now. And that there's a healing in honey for the people. No, 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 no. You cannot, uh, tabio, meaning one after the other, making scientifically correct statements like that. I don't care if it's bar, if you think, oh, well, maybe you observed it. If you're observing, you're gonna make an error of a ratio of 10 to one, 10 scientific errors for one true statement. This statement has ended the debate. You cannot do that. So in my remaining few minutes, th that, that actually wasn't my miracle, which I'm presenting today. The miracle is this, look, you have to agree, if Muhammad is not a true prophet, then he copied from the Bible because the stuff is so similar. Like, for example, in Mark chapter 4, verse 30, it says, uh, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. That's the words of Jesus. But this is scientifically incorrect. We now know that the orchid is actually, 
Well, there's many other seeds which are smaller. Orchid is an example of one. Now, let's read the Quran. And astonishingly, we find the same mustard seed example. But guess what we don't find? We don't find the scientific error that it is the smallest seed that you plant into the ground. That is not inside the Quran. So the question I have for Jay Smith, how do you explain this? Number one, if Muhammad was copying from the Bible, then why didn't he copy that scientific error? You could say he got lucky. Okay, I can accept that. But we're going to see this luck is going to strike again very quickly. And how do you explain the scientific error in your book, which is the Holy Bible. Now, let me get to the issue of ant speaking. There's no contradiction of science over there. What scientist is going to look at that statement about ants communicating or speaking and say, oh my God, this is all contradicting science. There's never been a scientist who has ever said that. Now, please keep in mind, for over the last 25 years now, internet trolls, pundits, and people who have been paid to attack the Quran. They've been knocking on the doors of scientists, getting them to look at this verse and say, hey, sh disagree with this. And today, not a single scientist would ever waste their time with it. So um, the whole thing about your stomach lying, that's a very, very good lesson here. Because science today also tells us that there is something called the placebo effect. The body can heal itself. It's about 20%. Uh, of what uh, they, they estimate that if people just believe in something and they allow their body to heal themselves, um, you can, you have 20% of people actually do that. There's a lot of good TED Talks on this exact topic. So what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said here was priceless and it is advice everybody should follow today. So there's my four minutes. My question for Jay Smith. How do you explain the scientific error in your book and it's not in the Quran? Well, again, we'd like to stay on topic. We're not talking about the Bible. We are talking about the scientific errors of the Quran. I did tell you that this was, in, and you read it, in the book of Mark, where Jesus is saying, to you, this is the smallest seed, to you, you know, and they're Palestinians. All they know, the majority of them are farmers, all they know is that their smallest seed in their world is a mustard seed, okay? So there is a geographical, uh, historical context that you're not applying. But Brother Jay, go ahead and take it from here. You got four minutes. I think it's fascinating that Nadir did not want to answer the caller's question. It would have been great to see how he would have struggled on that one. You can see how he wants to answer what he wants, it, and he wants to throw it back to the Bible, which is fascinating. You just answered it. This is a metaphor. We've always known the mustard seed is a metaphor because Christ always used language that the people could understand in his day. And he's talking about the kingdom of God, which is, starts as small as the mustard seed. For you people, that's the smallest seed you have, and then grows from there. Look at the metaphor he's using and don't try to take it literalistically to, to incorporate every seed in the world. But notice, he didn't want to go back to that question. Why is it that Uthman did burn those manuscripts? Ooh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I would love to do a debate with Nadir on that. Well, wait, wait till we get and find out that not only were they burned, have you seen what happened in 1924, how the Quran that we have today, this Quran, was only created in 1924, and all the ones that disagreed with it were taken out into a boat and sunk into the Nile. Now, he won't want to answer that one either, but let's get back to the scientific proofs, because I love to see, I'm going to continue right through his uh, his paper on what he did right. You can see he doesn't want to talk about this now. He said that's in 2008, yet he's quoting me from 2006 in the video where he besperches my name. So I'm going to continue back with these quotes. Evidently, he wants to throw these away now. He doesn't want to throw what he was saying in 2008. He wants to just talk about the mustard seed in the Bible. Interestingly, how he answered your water barriers in chapter 55, verses 19 to 20. What's fascinating is even if he wanted to say that there was no land, let's just say, Eddie, that there was no land between it. Let's just say that this is. When you go to an estuary, you will see this observable with your human eye. Anytime there has been a heavy rain and there is fresh water coming out of a river, like you have in London after a big storm, you go to the estuary there that goes into the English Channel, and you will see a line there. You will see where the dirty water of the storm is now coming and approaching the seawater. And you can see the barrier. It is observable. Anybody living to near an estuary would observe that. That is not a miracle. I'm sorry, Nadir. Don't call that a miracle. That's observable. This idea 
uh, that nobody can transgress that barrier. Well, what about the fishing boats that go out the very next morning? They're transgressing it all the time. Every estuary has fishing boats. Then he got into the whole notion of the dark ocean. Well, before that, and you notice he hasn't, re he hasn't responded to me about this Iram uh, in Surah 89, Ayah 7. I'd like to him to come back and show me why is it that he's only going on a National Geographic article of 1978 to prove the Bible is now a miracle when the National Geographic article is just quoting the Quran. <laughs> I'd love to hear how he's going to answer that. Now, let's go back to dark ocean. In chapter 24, verse 40, Nadir comes up this notion that there is that there, when you go down below a thousand meters, there is no light down there. And there's no way that anybody could have unknown known that. No way that anybody could have seen that. How did Muhammad know that it's pitch black at the bottom of the ocean? Uh, <laughs> I wish you had done a little bit more homework on that, Nadir. Actually, it's quite well known. It was well known in the second century. You have Rabbi Meir, who actually refers to the fact that Jonah and the story of Jonah, the whale, went so deep that he had to use lights uh, from his eyes. Now, he did. He was saying it was like he had, would have to use lights from his eye to be able to see where he's going. It is so dark, it's pitch black down there. This was also repeated by Tarfan in the second century, and it was then edited by Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer, uh, where is, which is fascinating because these do predate the Quran uh, by five centuries. I would even say six centuries, but we won't get into that debate tonight because that's one I can see you can't handle because you don't want to even talk about uh, what that, per that poor man who, who asked you that question earlier. So I want you to answer that. Do you really believe that the Quran is the first one to find that, uh, to, to delineate that there was absolutely pitch black at the bottom of the ocean when you have these references that predate it by five centuries? I also want to talk about your idea that Jerusalem is the lowest center, of, the lowest point on the earth. Do you really believe Jerusalem is the lowest point on the earth? As you said in your video in Surah 30, Jay, Ayah 20, Surah 30, Ayah 2. Your and time is done, Brother Jay. Uh, let's, let's go ahead, and I, I will take the next four minutes, uh, and then we will go to Brother Nadir for eight minutes. We're, we're just trying to keep track of time. Once again, I want to remind the callers to call us at 248 416-1300. And Brother Marwan's question was actually good in dealing with this topic because uh, we have 114 chapters today, but before it was 116. Before that, it was 111. I mean, which one is it? There are missing verses, uh, the breastfeeding of uh, 10 times and then reduced to five times, uh, the stoning of uh, the adulterous women. So there are a lot of verses that are missing, and we know that from the Hadith. But back to the ants, which I love so much that uh, I think uh, Alex had mentioned. In 27, 18 through 19, uh, at length, here's what I'm going to read, at length from the Quran, when they came to the valleys of the ants, one of the ants said, O ye ants, get into your habitations, let Solomon and his host crush you underfoot without knowing it. How did that ant know, as the caller said, that this was Solomon? How did that ant communicate, since they only communicate with pheromones and, and, and chemical uh, smells? Um, I, I, how is this a miracle? To what purpose is this serving? I mean, to know that the animal speaks? I mean, uh, this is only in one ant. How is it only this one ant that spoke? And there were like thousands of ants if they are right within their inhabitation, as the Quran is saying. Not only that, if you read that chapter, maybe two verses before, like for an example in verse 17, mentions that Solomon had soldiers of jinns, of men, and of birds, and they were all marching in rows. Jinns are, 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 are demons like the shaitans, men and birds. So here, jinn, if jinn is evil, Solomon had them as soldiers. So that must mean that Solomon controls evilness. We must exercise Solomon. Verse 19 says the, the Hopi bird, which in, in Arabic is al-hudhud, he's missing, right? And he's missing, and, and, and Solomon notices that this bird, which I have no idea how he notices, that this bird is missing, and he's, uh, he's saying that his punishment will be severe if he's not here, or if he doesn't show up, in verse 22. And then the bird shows up all of a sudden. And the bird has this amazing intelligence. He found, he find this, this woman that had a, a great throne, and she was a great ruler. And he's telling him everything about this woman. And even if we read uh, the, the, uh, the tafsirs about this, it's really, really quite funny how all this is coming together. But from the ants to the hood hood to the bird who's speaking, 
not only is he speaking, he is giving out an opinion about this woman and her throne. I have no idea how he knew that. And we know scientifically do not operate like that. They speak through pheromones and, I, like I said, chemical smells. Um, how did this all take place, Brother Nadir? I, I want to understand, and scientifically, and not only that, after you're done explaining it, if you could, how is this important to us? For us as non-believers, for us to believe in God, how is this supposed to help us believe in God and in the last prophet? I'll give that to you. You have eight minutes. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, but if we could, Brother Eddie, we should just do four minutes each person because I wanted to make sure I respond to Jay. So Jay is pointing out that I'm running away from a lot of topics. That's absolutely true. I don't want to talk about Uthman burning manuscripts. Let's debate that in the next discussion. I don't want to talk about my, my debate back in 2008. I mean, this is all good stuff. We can talk about it. Uh, the thing about the deep, dark sea that someone actually said that in the bottom of the sea, there is no light. I don't know of any reference for that, but these are all good topics. But the topic, I mean, really what we need to be discussing is you need to show uh, how Prophet Muhammad was able to make four scientifically correct statements back to back to back. There, there should be a scientific error ratio of 10 to 1 at least uh, if you're doing scientific work, if it's research, if you're copying from somebody, there's got to be a 10 to 1 ratio there. The issue here tonight is, oh, look, the Quran got that there's uh, a healing in honey that's scientifically correct. That's not the issue here. The issue is how did you get it scientifically correct without making scientific errors? If you say Muhammad copied from other uh, sources, in those other sources, it'll say stuff like, honey is good for you, there's a healing in it, and it will enter your lungs, which is a scientific error. You see, this is my point. If Muhammad is copying the stuff, how is it that there's no scientific errors? Um, the whole thing about ants communicating with pheromones and chemicals, the Quran doesn't deny this, okay? What we are speaking about here with the whole story of Solomon, we are talking about a miracle which God did for Solomon, all right? And the, the basic rule of a miracle is you don't apply scientific principles to, when, to, to the miracles which God does. Because it's like, okay, let's say let's say a man was raised from the dead. Well, how could that be possible? You, how can that scientifically be possible? Well, you can't answer that because by definition of a miracle, it's inexplicable by the laws of nature. You don't apply science to that. But anyways, there is nothing which negates the fact that ants communicate with pheromones or something else or anything like that. So there's no scientific contradiction there. You, you brought up a lot of irrelevant issues, Brother Eddie. Like there are things which are quite funny in the inside the Quran. Well, saying that the mustard seed is the smallest seed is actually can be ridiculed as well, uh, Brother Eddie. So um, I think you need to look at your own book first here. You ask questions like, how is this important to us? We can definitely talk about it. It's talking about the great majesty and the kingdom which God bestowed Solomon and the significance of that, but that's off topic. Let's The miracle which I'm presenting for you guys tonight, take it or leave it, you got these scientific errors in the Bible. Why are they not in the Quran? Now, you guys did raise a good point. You said this is a seed you did, which You did all, take up yeah. five minutes, Brother Nadir, you did take up five minutes, and we do have a caller. Uh, caller is, his name is Ijaz. Ijaz, go ahead. Who is your question to, if you have one, or if you have any comments or objection, who is it towards? Take 30 seconds, please. Thank you. My question is towards Brother Nadir Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum. And for the charlatan J. Smith, the Bible in Matthew chapter 13, verse 32 says, Ho mikrot, he, sorry, ho mikrot teron, men estin panton ton spermaton which means the smallest of all the seeds in the Greek. How does Brother Nadir Ahmed coalesce this with what the Quran says in Surah 95, Ayah 1, where it speaks of the hepa-protective effects of olive oil with the fig and date palm fruits, where it strengthens people that are weak with chemotherapy. On the one hand, you have the Quran giving you scientific evidence for something which heals you, and on the other hand, you have a major blunder 
and then it has to want to be garden pantone that's quick for all the seeds thank you have a good night okay Thank you for that. I think this was a, a praise report in, in 95.1 by the fig and the olive. This is where uh, Allah is squaring by the fig and the olive. Uh, I, I didn't understand the rest of his question because it was hard to hear. Uh, so maybe uh, through the Trinity Channel app that we have on Facebook, you can post your question there and then we can read it and see what it's about. But I'll go ahead and give it to Brother Jane since Nadir's time is out. Go ahead, Dr. J, and take four minutes discussing whatever you'd like about the topic. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, um, uh, answer Ijaz very quickly. I don't think Ijaz was listening when we said this is a metaphor. Therefore, do not try to put a literalistic interpretation on the mustard seed. About his uh, reference in Surah 30, uh, 95, Ayah 1, the fig, the olive, and the by, by Mount Sinai, by the city of security, and according to my Quran, that says Mecca. Boy, I'd like to hear Ijaz try to understand that there was no Mecca at the time the Quran was written. There was no Mecca, I'm sorry, at the time that Muhammad was living. There was no Mecca at the time of Uthman that we know of. Looks, the earliest reference we have for a city called Mecca is not till 741. Muhammad died in 632. How does he answer that? I'd love to know. This is Ijaz Ahmed, who is from Trinidad, who was supposed to have debated me, I understand, back in Hong Kong in November. Now, let's go back and let's continue with what I'm saying. Um, Nadir asked, he said, where are there any errors in this story about the bees. I'll give you two right now. Uh, just look and see. It says it must uh, go and eat fruit. Now, I want anybody who's listening, some bees can eat fruit. That's true. But is that what bees eat, or do bees eat the nectar from the flowers? So already there is one error. If that's the only thing that the Quran says the bees eat is fruit. Now, I'm taking your same logic and putting it right against you, Nadia. You're taking a little bit and you're expanding upon it. I'm taking a little bit and expanding it upon it as well. So what you're saying is the Quran does not realize that actually bees don't eat fruit normally. They can, but they normally eat the nectar from flowers. There's the first error. The second error is that this honey that is produced comes from the, from, from the stomach of the bee. I want anybody to look and just Google this. I just Googled it. Everyone that I Googled said that honey comes from the honeycomb that is take, brought by the bees into the honeycomb from the nectar of the flowers. It does not come from the, the, uh, from the bee's stomach. That is a metaphor, again, about the, bee, uh, the, honey, the, the honey stomach. It is not produced there. So I would love to know where Nadir thinks that this is, that this is, not a, a, this is a real error. This is a, a glaring error. Now, let's continue on, because I would love to get through these things that Nadir now wants to run away from. He still hasn't answered the question about the... Low, the dark ocean. Please answer that in Surah 24, Ayah 40. How is it that the Quran is a miracle because it knows that there's darkness at the bottom of the ocean? You said you don't know who this Rabbi Meir is and Rabbi Tarfan is. They're from the second century. If they could know this in the second century, this was nothing new. It was nothing new. Therefore, even those who write, who wrote the Quran would know that it's dark. Anybody who swims, I don't know if you swim or not, Nadia. I have swum many times in the ocean. The deeper you go, the darker it gets. It also gets very much pressure. That is observation. That is just logic, that it gets darker the deeper you go. Let me go to Surah 30, Ayah 2. This is another one I want to hear Nadia try to answer. But please answer about these things with the bee. Please answer about the dark ocean. Now please answer chapter 30, verse 2 which talks, of, and you said very clearly in your video, uh, that the Romans defeated, the, were defe uh, defeated, the, were defeated, the Romans defeated the, um, I'm sorry, the Romans were defeated in Jerusalem, I think around 630 is what you're saying, and that that was the lowest place, according to so 30, I oh, too, where they were defeated was the lowest place, and you said, there, the, the Quran is a miracle again, and you made a big thing about it on your video. <laughs> The lowest place on earth is not Jerusalem. It's actually quite a bit higher than the Dead Sea. That is the lowest place. That is 33 kilometers away. Get your topography right. In fact, in the Quran at chapter 30, verse 2, it doesn't say lowest. You wanted to change the Arabic to make it say lowest. In every Quran I looked at this afternoon, it says the nearest land, not the lowest land, but the nearest land. And in parentheses, in every Quran that I looked at, it said Syria, Iraq, and Jordan. This has nothing to do with Jerusalem. It has nothing to do with lowest. You've misinterpreted it. You've imposed what you want to find your miracle. And I would love to know why you're so desperate to find these miracles because there's nothing else you have to support this book. Back to you. Okay, thank you, Brother Jay. Uh, it is my turn to go next with another four minutes. I just want to remind uh, the audience 
to call. Our phone lines are open, 248-416-1300. And mentioning that, we do have another call from either another Alex or the same Alex that had called earlier. Who is your question, comment, or objection to? Please take about 30 seconds to do that. Go ahead, Alex. Um, hi, same Alex. I want to clarify a question I asked before. I asked Nadir about the miracle of talking ant, and uh, and Quran is very specific here. It said that the miracle was that Solomon was able to understand normal talk of an ant. An ant is talking logically. An ant is talking like humanly. Do you think, Nadir, that the ant outside of your house knows you by name, could recognize your face, or and could tell you different between could tell different between you and your neighbor? That's what exactly Quran is implying. So if that he calls it miracle of the Quran, scientific miracle of the Quran, that's big, very big question. Could you please talk about it? Thank you. Thank you, brother Nadir. Take about one minute to answer that, please, and then we have another call right after, and then we'll get back to the topic at hand. Go ahead, brother Nadir. No, no, no. no. Listen, guys. You promised me eight minutes. You cut me off after three. Then you gave it to Jay to speak for another four minutes. Come on, guys. We, for our I told you. I was, told you. I Hold have... on, Nadir. Nadir, I told you, brother. Take eight minutes. You were like, no, I don't want to. I'll take four. I mean, it's recorded. You can go back and watch it. Okay, when okay. I give you eight well, minutes, I, you say, give me four, well, and then you accuse me of not being fair. Uh, okay. let, let's All do right. this correctly. Answer Alex, right. well, 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 and, then me, I, I answer and then we Jay, have though. another call. Okay, well, let me take my missing four minutes, and then we can go four minutes, four minutes. Okay? Sure, but these callers, these callers, when they do okay. call, they're calling from a distance. Okay. They can't. So wait he's already been answered. This is a miracle which God did for Solomon, and we do not apply science to uh, to miracles. So God did many miracles, and for uh, Solomon to be able to understand ants. Uh, God can do all kinds of miracles, so I hope he can understand that. Once again, we don't see any contradiction of science. If we look at what scientists, you know, uh, what they would object to, they would not object to this because they would basically walk away from this. I go, oh, okay, we see something of the metaphysical world, something supernatural, they'll just walk away from that. There's nothing there which contradicts modern science. Now, can I address Jay now? One more call that's on hold. This is from Joe. Joe, who's your question to, comment or objection? And please take 30 seconds to do that. Go ahead. Regarding uh, Surah 16. Can Sorry. you please speak louder? We can barely hear you. Yeah, Surah 16, Ayah 66. And he says that indeed for you is a grazing livestock uh, is a lesson. We give you drink from what is in their bellies. That is wrong because we do not drink anything from what comes in their bellies. We drink from what comes from their breast. Milk is formed in their breast, not in the belly. If we uh, tear them apart, we will not find anything in their bellies. And then he says, between excretion and blood, pure milk, uh, palatable to drinkers, that is also wrong. Uh, excretion and blood does not bring milk. I uh, would love Nadir to, to answer that, please. Thank you. Go ahead, Nadir. Take about one minute to answer that. I will go for four minutes. Then you will go for eight whole minutes. We will make sure of that. But if I okay, tell you no, let's no, go for eight no, minutes, please don't say four minutes only, and then you accuse us of not being fair. Go ahead. Uh, answer that okay, for about a minute. I've, yeah, I've got a whole list of stuff i got to answer here. I've got it written down, so let me take a quick minute. This is, uh, first of all, the milk... Uh, the caller actually has a scientific error. The milk doesn't come from the breast, okay? It comes from the utter. So basically how milk formed is very, is exactly like what we see here in the Quran. First of all, the, the, they eat their chud. It goes to their stomach. And then it goes to the intestines. Remember, the Quran said uh, between the farts, which is like excretion, it goes through the intestine. And then... It goes into the bloodstream, and from the bloodstream, it goes to the udder. Now, the Quran said it's between the the the, 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 the farth, which is like the excretion, and the blood. And we know that milk is nothing but secreted blood. So once again, the Quran is dropping hints, hey, I know how this process works. So not only was this not a scientific error, 
milk doesn't come from the breast. <laughs> it is as another astonishing uh, hint here that this author of the Quran knows how milk is produced because it went through the intestines and into the blood and the Quran said between the feces and the blood. There's a good Google video on this about milk is nothing but excreted blood. Now how, you, you can't yeah. look at this and say Muhammad could not have known any of this. He's dropping hints, hey, I know how this thing works. Okay, thank you, Nadir, for answering that caller. We do have one more call so that we can finally get to uh, the, uh, the, the rest of the topic. This is John on the phone. Go ahead, John. Yes, um, I was just calling because the, the one miracle that it seems is being presented is the one that has to do with uh, the bees. That, that's the one that's been um, brought up a couple times and, and the stomach and so on and so forth. So I did go ahead and Google it, and it does say something about a, a stomach, but it's really not the stomach. It, it does say here, for when I'm looking at that, it does the nectar never gets into the bee's digestive system, which would be a stomach but that it, it uh, is in the esophagus, and then it comes back from there. So if if it's being uh, alleged that the Quran actually said that it is in the stomach of the bee, that would be incorrect scientifically. So that is a scientific error if we if the Quran is saying that it goes into the bee's stomach. There is, there is no nectar that goes into the digestive system of the bee in order to make the honey, and I'm looking at it right now online. Anyone can do that. Right. Well, obviously, we'll need a lot more research than just one Google search. But thank you for doing that. Um, I've looked into this deeply. Uh, I don't agree with Brother Nadir, and I wish we had more time to discuss this. But let's move on. Uh, the next topic that we'll talk about uh, is uh, the shooting stars. Every time you see a shooting star, this is God shooting at a demon who's trying to creep into heaven to gain some intelligence or some information. Um, this is from uh, 72, chapter 72, verse 8 and 9. But before that, chapter 37, verses 6 through 10, we have indeed adorned the Lord heaven with beauty and stars uh, and for guard against every defiant devil so that they cannot hear the highest assembly but be cast away from every side, repulsed there is the perpetual torment and so on. Uh, the spirits of jinn here is mentioned in 72 verses 8 through 9. But a jinn is speaking and says, We pried into heaven and we have found it, we have we found it full of strong guards and meteors, and we used to sit near it, perched for hearing. But he who listens now will find a flaming fire and wait for him. So these are where, where the jinns are going in 67 verse 5. And we have adorned the lowest heaven with lambs, and we have made them missiles. So these lambs are missiles. It's not the case in Arabic, by the way, but I don't have much time to get into that. For the devils and for them were prepared the punishment of fire. So over and over again, the Quran is talking about this fire that is being shot at heaven, at uh, uh, jinns or demons that are trying to work their way in. It is we who have set out the zodiac in the heaven and adorned it for beholders, and we have guarded it from every cursed devil, stone, Satan, except he who steals hearing, he who steals a hearing and a clear flaming fire pursues him. So when you see a shooting star, it's because a demon went over there and heard something, and God wasn't paying attention because he was watching TV. Uh, he was watching Law and Order because that's his favorite show. He turns around and, oh, somebody's trying to steal it. And there's a uh, a comet that goes after him and is shooting at him. And when you see a shooting star, that's exactly what's happening. It's shooting after a demon or a devil or a Satan. And it could be either a meteor or a meteorite, which I don't have the time to get into for the sake of time. Uh, we'll just get into this after. Brother Nadir talks for his eight minutes as he so badly wanted. Uh, and then we'll, we'll get into this a little bit further to see what a shooting star actually is. And that's a scientific huge error in the Quran. Brother Nadir, you have eight minutes. Okay, so uh, uh, let me <laughs> just turn my clock here. Uh, you speak Arabic, right, Brother Eddie? I do. Okay. Okay. Or Najam. 
Yes. In this verse, let me translate for that for you guys. So that's my Arabic 101 right there. Okay, let me translate for that. Uh, translate that to you guys. When you actually read the verse, there's nothing about a star or a shooting star. It's talking about uh, the lamps. In fact, let me let me get the verse uh, right in front of me over here. It's uh, and you engage in mockery of the Quran, which I'm just going to go ahead and let slide to for today, because um, when we look at the scientific errors of the Bible, those people were, are going to laugh at that, I think, a lot more than anything to do with the Quran. What the I'm sorry, the word there is mis from the word misbah, meaning lamp. OK, that he uses this as a missile. Now, how does this contradict science? Science is going to look at this and say, once again, this is a metaphysical uh, something or another. It does not, you know, they're, they're going to walk away from this. So this is, again, off topic. But now, I want to, now, Jay, you know, you guys have shot a lot of points at me. I'm going to try to address all of them. Jay, you keep going back to my 2008 debate. Like I said, we could talk about that, but let's stick with the topic of the miracle which I am presenting here today. Okay, now you did make a good statement here about the mustard seed. You said, Regarding the mustard seed, if it's all, if Jesus said, it's all you know, oh, this is what is known to you in the world, or the smallest seed you have, well, then, yeah, you guys are right. Then that's not a scientific error. But I can assure you, nothing of that is written in the Bible. So let's read what it says. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like the mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field, though... Now, check this out. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, it is the smallest of all seeds. To you, which you know? No, that's nowhere in the text. So this is a scientific error which you need to answer. And th that, the issue here is not, okay, look, the Bible has scientific errors. I don't care about that. But the issue here tonight is, why don't we find that in the Quran? Now, let us go to another one. Both the Bible and the Quran, they talk about being a virgin is good. Okay, yeah, of course, when you're on your marriage night, being a virgin is a good thing. The Quran, but the Bible says inside the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 17 and 18, and they shall spread the garment before the elders of the city. And it goes on that if the elders of the city uh, shall take the man, um, shall take the man and chastise him if she doesn't bleed on these bedsheets. It's talking about the virgin blood on the bedsheet. And then they should fi file uh Find him a hundred shekels. So, in fact, let me read verse 17. Then, behold, um, he has charged her with a shameful deed, saying, I did not find your daughter a virgin. But the evidence is, the evidence is this, that of the daughter's virginity, that they shall spread the garments on uh, for everybody to take a look, which is like virgin blood on the bedsheet. This is a scientific error. Today, science te tells us today there are many virgins who will not bleed uh, on their on their marriage night because they might not have a hymen. They're my, some women are born without hymens. Um, they do not have, uh, or maybe it's been ruptured through horseback riding or just some kind of strenuous exercise. So now the metaphorical stuff, that didn't work for the mustard seed. It surely is not going to work here. So Jay, I'm going to ask you to renounce Christianity today because you said, no, 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 not my God. My God could never make a scientific error. Ah, but what about the Quran? The Quran also says to be a virgin is good. On your In Surah chapter uh, 66, verse 5, it talks about being a virgin is a good thing. But guess what you don't find? You got it. The virginity test. That is nowhere to be found inside all of Hadith or in the Quran. So, okay, Muhammad got lucky on the mustard seed. All right, maybe he got lucky. He didn't copy. It is the smallest seed which you plant in the ground. Fine. But now we see Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam getting lucky again. The the virginity test, this is the um, the, the uh, blood on the bedsheet blunder. There is nothing on the bedsheet which can determine, there is nothing, period, which can determine a woman's virginity. This is what science tells us today. And guess what you don't find in the Quran? You got it, the virginity test. Number three, both the Quran and the Bible, they talk about Noah's flood. The Bible speaks about a universal flood. Um, the Quran also speaks about a flood inside chapter 25, verse 37. But look what it says. Well, let me go back. Why is a universal flood contradict science? 
because there's millions of species of animals, more than millions of species of animals out there. We're still discovering them today. So could you imagine an ark so big that you fit all these millions of animals? And then there's always a task of reintroducing them into the wild again, which is another big task. Science says this is impossible. And they and actually all, this is actually a scientific error I learned in college. This is something which is unanimously attested by scientists as a, as a blunder in the book. But now let's go to the Quran. Chapter 25, verse 37. And the people of Noah, when they denied the messenger, we drowned them. Who? The whole world? No. The people of Noah. So here we see the Quran yet a third time correcting the scientific blunders of the Bible. So one thing I want to hear from Jay Smith, I would like to hear your opinion on this virgin blood on the bedsheet. Do you reject this as a scientific error? Take 20 seconds of my time, Jay, and explain it to me. Do you re will you reject this virgin blood on the bedsheet blunder? Jay, are you there? Are you asking me that right now? Yes, he wants you to respond, 20 second response. Very simple, this is a test that is used all over the world. I'm not worried about that. It's not a problem for me because that is usually a test that is even done today uh, in most parts of the world, not in the West, of course, we don't do that. I find it fascinating though that when he wants to go to the flood account in Surah 25, verse 37 he says because of the fact that it doesn't didn't mention the word ark in there that they were just going to uh, that they were going to be destroyed that now he is denying that there was any ark or they was denying that there was a universal flood does is nadim trying to say nadir trying to say that there was no flood now for the for all of mankind or is it just a local flood is he now trying to say that there was no ark is that what he's assuming with uh, chapter 25 verse 37 he still not answered me on the about the flowers and the uh, the fruit uh, about the bees either going to fruit or to flower nectar. He hasn't answered me about the uh, about the nectar and honey being made in the stomach. He hasn't answered the caller as well. Have you noticed he's completely de running away from these questions? So before and here he's trying to get it back to Deuteronomy, going back to Deuteronomy 17. What's that got to do with tonight's debate? So he's digressing in every possible way, so he doesn't have to answer these questions. Please answer these questions, Nadia. Yeah, so that I was going to give you 20 seconds. Okay, I'm sorry, I forgot to answer all the other stuff. But no, you said, okay, wait a second. It's not a test for me. People still use it. Come on, Jay. If people are still doing that, then they're ignorant. And I can't believe you're going to follow the ignorant people of virginity tests. This is bonkers. And that's the bonkers in the Bible, which is not in the Quran. Now, let me answer you about the stomach. So I have come to, uh, prepared tonight with my references. So I will read from you. Uh, I believe, I, in fact, I, I, I put it in the text about the honey stomach. The, what the caller was talking about, he's doing this ad hoc something, and he was barely intelligible about something and not entering the digestive system. The Quran never said it did. All the Quran said it comes from their stomach. Now, let me read from you the Guardian article, and I can, I can do, can I share my desktop here real quick, you guys? Um, in fact, I'll, let me go ahead and, and hit my little share, just so Jay can read this along with me. Uh, it does come from their stomach because, again, look, you guys don't know what I'm talking about to begin with, okay? You're just right now doing quick ad hoc Google searches to win the debate, uh, but that's not going to work. You can't see that. Look, no, here, it's too here. small. It's too small? Yeah. Okay, I'll, it's a, they, this is from the article which talks about the bees and how they make honey from the Guardian. I, I put it to you inside the, the chat text. They store it in what is called the honey stomach which is different from their food stomach. So they, like I told you, this is coming from their stomach, which is, and that's what the Quran said. So this is what science today, I've given you my link, my article substantiating that. Now, there was also another thing. I'm, you're right, I'm not answering a lot because I'm being hit, bombarded with so many uh, points. You said, well, the flower nectar, that's what's normal. The Quran doesn't contradict that. Again, you have not answered how did Muhammad وسلم, get it right four times in a row and corrected three scientific blunders of the Bible. And Nadir, I'm going to come back to you because I'm not going to let you go. Uh, uh, no, no problem. It seems like, Nadir, we, it seems like we yeah. have lost uh, the video call. We can only hear your voice. Uh, oh, okay, I think let me, you went to desktop yeah. and did not bring up your, your picture again.
Your video? Yeah, okay, sorry about that. Uh, okay, well, I tell you what, um, can, can you see me now? Yes, and you have about two minutes. Okay, okay, so um, let me see what else. I, you're right, I, there's so much here I'm missing, and it's and I, I apologize. It's just that <laughs> I've been bombarded from left and right. Okay, you keep saying, so now you went back and said that the mustard seed, uh, you know, was Not all this metaphorical. Again. This is what all <laughs> false religions try to uh, say to defend the scientific contradictions in their Bible. There's nothing... There's nothing metaphorical about this, okay? There's nothing metaphorical about saying that the mustard seed is the smallest seed which is planted in the ground. But as you can see, Jay Smith is just misleading himself and misleading others on the Bible blunders. But that's not the important here. The question is there, why is that not in the Quran? If Muhammad's copying from that book, Believe me, he's going to copy those scientific errors. But I'm not going to let you go on this virgin blood on the bedsheet blunder. You said something, well, I don't do it. Well, whoever does it, you know, that person should be condemned. They are ignorant people. Science Today has debunked this. There is nothing on the bedsheet uh, which can determine virginity. It's a myth. It's a folklore. Yet this is what the Bible says. Yet we find no scientific errors um, in the Quran. Now, Jay, very quickly, did I address all your points uh, on the scientific errors referring to the beavers? Because if you cannot address that, it's over. That's four scientifically correct statements. Bees do eat fruit. The honey comes from their, from their stomach. It's the female bee which goes out. And honey, there's a great healing in it. You cannot make four scientifically correct statements in the desert, which people even today don't even know. People like the callers, they're like, huh, what? Honey comes from the stomach, Hun bees eat fruit. Even today, we don't know this stuff. Yet this was mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago. So you have to answer that, and you have to answer this blood on the bedsheet blunder in your Bible. Please don't go back to the 2008 debate. We can talk about that later, but address what's being presented Nadir, to your you time today. Is up, brother. All right, thank you for that. Nadir, your time is up. Uh, brother Jay, go ahead and, and in four minutes, I guess cram in there as much as you can because we can't really address all these topics. Go Eddie, ahead, Eddie, uh, Dr. J. I ask a question first about timing. Before For, you start the time. Yes, go ahead. How much time do we have left in this talk? Uh, we have about seven minutes left, but obviously it will be extended. Uh, is, this my last, is this my last talk? Is this the last no, thing no, I'm saying? No, no, this is not your last chance. We will let you know when the last talk is. Okay, let's let's go through. It's obvious that he does not want to accept uh, that when in the Quran, uh, it's very clear that when it says to eat fruit, that uh, that's not what honeys, uh, that's not what bees do. They more ma mainly get nectar from flower. He doesn't want to accept that. That's fine. Uh, the, the, those who are watching can see that he's made a mistake, uh, that the Quran has made a mistake on that. It's obvious that he does not understand what the caller was saying. He claims that the guy was garbled. We could all understand. It was very clear. He was saying that the nectar that, it, that the, 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 the bees take from the flower does not go into their stomach. It stays above the stomach. It's put into the honeycomb. It's in the honeycomb where the honey is made. There is no honey in the stomach of any bee. Whether or not it's called a bee, a honey stomach, is superfluous. That's another mistake that the Quran has made. So those are two mistakes already in that same reference. He didn't has still not answered about the dark ocean. He still not has not answered uh, uh, about the lowest land being Jerusalem. He has still not answered about the water barriers to you. But I want to say he made this claim that there is no error whatsoever. So I want to now go to Surah 21, Ayah 33, that science now proves that the sun and the moon have orbits. Uh, and he made this many years ago, Nadir, so I'm going to bring it back to you because this is a real glaring error in the Quran. The sun and the moon have orbits. Nadir will want to say that these are separate orbits, uh, that we have now found that the sun has orbits, that the sun does have an orbit within the uh, Milky Way uh, system, but that th nobody could have known about. That's not what the Quran is saying here. Go to chapter 3640. The sun and the moon orbiting the earth one following the other. That debunks Surah 21, Ayah 33. Then go to Surah 91, Ayah 1 and 2. The, the moon follows the sun. It's right there. If you can see those, if you look at both chapter 21, 33 and 36, 40 and 91, verse 1 and 2, you can see the Quran is very clear that the sun is following the moon in an orbit around the earth. 
This has completely been debunked today by modern science. So there is a glaring error. If you even look at what Al-Buhari, look at Al-Buhari, volume four, book 54, number 421. Muhammad says that as the sunset is, is, is receding, this is what Muhammad says, and he is the one that which the Quran is revealed. The sun prostrates itself underneath the throne as for, uh, during the sunsets, uh, the sun setting, and takes permission to rise again. But it will be ordered to return when it has come, and so it will rise in the west. So even Muhammad, your prophet, is referring and suggesting that the sun sets in the east. It stays down there. It has to have permission to come up in the west every day, which is supported by Surah 21, Ayah 33, Surah 36, Ayah 40, Surah 91, Ayah 1 and 2. We have given you a glaring problem uh, with your Quran right there. We've also given you two glaring problems with the bees. We've also given you a huge problem uh, uh, we've always uh, with looking at the transgression of the waves. The fact that none of this is not a clown. That's not a problem. I, 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 let me uh, correct myself. That's not really a error. What that is is nothing more than observation. Nadir would like to say this is a miracle. He still hasn't answered me on Iram's problem in chapter 89, verse 7. He wants to walk away from this. He hasn't answered on what the caller talked about concerning the, the burning of the manuscripts. If you are talking about a Quran that I would say that this Quran, any any scientific, if let's say we did find some scientific proof, so there are probably some scientific statements that are correct. I would suggest that most of them have been borrowed from other sources. We've already given you the source uh, for the dark ocean, that, that, that it's dark at the bottom of the sea from Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Tarfa. I would suggest that even the story of Dual Karnain uh, is also borrowed, but also the story of Solomon and Sheba and the Hoopa bird that's in chapter 21. Uh, sorry, chapter 27 of the Quran, 17, verse 17 to 44. That is found in the second Targum of Esther from the second century. If you take a look at the Quran, you will find that many of these stories have been borrowed. They've been borrowed from many different sources. Uh, the, the problem of the embryological cycle, the fourth stage of the embryological cycle, that is taken from Galen, who was a second century Jewish embryologist, uh, was living in Pergamon. So you can see almost all of these stories that Nadir and many of the Muslims would like to claim as miracles are not really miracles they're nothing that more than borrowings from other sources so what and where is his where is and why is he so desperate to find a miracle in the quran i can suggest because that's all that the muslims have this is not much of a great book uh, and since they have nothing else to fall back on they have to go to miracles we've okay, pretty well you, showed Jay. tonight your there time no is up thank you brother i appreciate it all right we want to remind our callers that our show ends at 10 30 but we decided to extend it till 10 45 uh, still go ahead and call us. The phone number is 248-416-1300. Uh, I want to address uh, something that uh, Nandir has said. As far as the English speaking, and he's trying to correct me. Brother, I, I, I don't know how to say this nicely. I can, I can put 10 of you in my pocket when it comes to Arabic speaking here. And I'm talking because this is my native language. This is where I grew up, born and raised in Baghdad, Iraq. Uh, when I say barzakh in the, the separating of the two seas as it is in English, this is a land barrier. Or when you quoted uh, chapter 67 for me about these uh, were not stars, were lamps. Let me read to you in Arabic so that you can see it. وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَا That means we have furnished. السَّمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا the, 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 the skies, the heavens. بِمَصَابِحَ that means with lamps. Are you trying to tell me that these are literal lamps that are sitting in the heavens? No. Obviously, these are stars. Obviously, these are stars that give out light. Okay? بِمَصَابِحَ وَجَعَلْنَهَا رُجُومًا رُجُومًا means we have made them into missiles. رُجُومًا We have made them into missiles. This is God talking. All right, we have made them into missiles. Lil shayateen to who? To satans, to demons, to to, to the shayateen. Wa tadna lahum adaban insair. Okay, so these are not literal lamps. They're shooting stars, and God has made them into missiles that shoot at satans. And then you're telling me that I, <laughs> you're telling me that I have made a mistake about uh, this verse in the Arabic. So 
really, brother, I don't, I don't understand your logic. I think we, we have a call, and then I'll continue with my four minutes. That was one minute that I spoke to. Uh, go ahead. Uh, this is uh, Brother Daniel. Go ahead. Uh, who's your question to? Or comment or objection? And please take about 30 seconds and nothing more, please. Thank you. Go ahead. Hello, I got just two questions. Question number one. I can barely one. hear you. Can you please speak louder? Hello, you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, in Surah 18, verse 50, how did the shaitan have children if he had only when was kicked out? This is question number one. Question number two, in Surah 41, verse 11, Allah created earth first and after that heaven. But in Surah 79, verse 27, Allah created heaven first and after that earth. So which one it created first, the heaven or the earth? Thank you. Okay, that's a lot to take in. So I'll take 1850 and uh, the rest, uh, maybe Brother Nadir and Jay can take it as well. So 1850 basically says uh, that Iblis was kicked out for not bowing down to Adam. I don't know why would God want him to bow down to Adam in the first place. But he did not bow down or prostrate himself, therefore he was kicked out. Uh, I don't know how to say this nicely, but we're, we're, we're going to go into the tefsir of 1850. Uh, because we were talking about it, I had it up just from yesterday's uh, study. Let me read this to you, and it is in Arabic, and I will explain it or translate it. Nadir, you said you speak Arabic. If we can please put them up on the screen as well. You said you speak Arabic. Correct me if I'm wrong. Stop me right away. Correct me if I'm wrong. All right, this is the Tafsir al Qurtubi for 1850. What does that mean? That means this is uh, the name for Shaitan. That means he went into himself sexually. This is Satan. He went into himself sexually in himself. So Satan here had sex with himself, and he laid five eggs, okay? فَهَذَا أَصْلْ دَرْيَتُهِ or ثُرَيَاتُهُ هَذَا أَصْلْ ثُرَيَاتُهُ That means this is the beginning. This is how it originated. What that caller was saying is, how did Satan uh, become more Satans or more Shaitans because he was the only one kicked out? فَهَذَا أَصْلْ دُرَيَاتُهُ وَقِيلْ إِنَّ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى خَلَقَ لَهُ That means, oh, and say, this God, Almighty, he made for himself fi khadil yumna dhukra. Fi khadil yumna dhukran. Dhukran is a male part. So God here made for himself, for, for Satan, on the right thigh, a male part. This is a penis. Okay? I, I'm surprised that I have to show it, say it on the show. He made for it, for Satan, on the right leg, dhukra, wa fil yusra farjaha. And in the left thigh, he made a vagina. This is how Satan brings forth kids. He claps his legs, and he literally has sex with himself. Do you know what that word means? He has sex. And then he has sex from this and this. This leg with this leg, he merges them together, and he has sex. فَيُخْرَجْ لَهُ كُلِّ يوم, And then comes out or then emerges to him every single day عَشْرُ بِيضَاتِ Ten eggs. Look at the imagination of Muhammad here. Ten eggs are laid every single day. يَخْرُجْ مِنْ كُلْ بيضة, Out of each egg comes out سَبْعُونَ شَيْطَانَ وَشَيْطَانَ Seventy Satan male and Satan female. Every single day this is what happens. And as soon as he comes out, as soon as the shaitan comes out, he starts flying away. And this is the way that we have so many shaitans and shaitanas and so many jinns and so many demons. is because Satan literally has sex with himself. This is Tafsir al-Qurtubi. You cannot say no to this. This is one of the most trusted sources. Anybody who's listening, go to chapter 18, verse 50, and look at the Tafsir al-Qurtubi. And this is how it's made. But I believe I've talked over my four minutes, and even though I was just answering a question, I will give my time to Brother Nadir to answer the second question, and then we'll give uh, Jay a minute to answer that as well, or to rebut what you've said. But go ahead, Brother Nadir. 
taking Can you like hear me? double the amount of time to, to, you guys are taking double the amount of time to speak. I've got all these things I got to answer. Come on, guys. You're only giving me one minute or how much, how much time do I get? To answer the call. The minute is just to answer the call and then we will go to your time that's allotted to you for you to talk. But it's just to okay, answer the well, call. What was, the, what was the caller's the, uh, question again? The question again? was, how was it made in, in six days in one verse? Uh, or which one was made first? Heaven or, or earth, as one verse says, or earth and then heaven, as the other verse says? Well, I, I, I don't know which verses you're talking about. Which, which one are you, are you referring to? He had to? mentioned the verses, and I did not write them down, but I can get no, it from the text. I didn't write text. them down either. Go ahead, Sorry. go ahead and take your four minutes as you wanted to, and then we'll answer that caller as well. Okay, uh, before I begin my four minutes, I want to ask Jay just a quick question. Will you disavow the virginity test found in the book of Deuteronomy, yes or no, about blood on the bed sheets? Just answer that, then I'll begin my four minutes. I, I don't go either way. I don't, I don't practice it today. Of course I don't practice today, so why should I? But it's in your Bible. Uh, sorry, I don't follow the Old Testament. I follow Jesus Christ. That's a whole other debate as to what we, what was happening in 1400 BC and what we use, what we follow today. I go to Matthew 5. If you want to go into that thing, if you want to go into, I would love to debate you on that because it's brilliant that you that you even bring it up. Why don't we go and follow the Mosaic Law and why do we follow Jesus Christ? I wish you wouldn't, Nadia. You could really come on home. You could use an awful lot of good solid logic because almost everything that we need to follow today you can find in Jesus Christ. Okay, so can I, let me begin. So Jay Smith, let me translate what he's saying in English. He acknowledges this to be a scientific error inside his Mosaic law. I don't follow that law. I follow Jesus. Come on, man. You are kind of dancing around the issue. But for the record, let it be known, he's accepting this as a scientific error. Good, there's one. Now, the second scientific error. You said this was Please like, don't uh, misquote me, Nadir. I did not accept it as a scientific error. This has nothing to do with science. This is a custom that existed in 1400 BC. It is not something that we do today. Uh, many people do it today. I don't do it today. We don't do that in the West. And the reason that we don't follow the Mosaic Law, now get it right, I'm not saying that's an error. We don't follow it because we leave it in 1400 BC and we follow Jesus Christ. Please okay. quote me right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is, this is your time. Go ahead, Nadir. Okay, I've, as you can see, he's running, uh, Jay Smith is running away from no. the scientific error. It's not a scientific error because it was practiced a uh, thousand in the 40 BC, whatever. Come on, does this stuff make sense to you? He's just, what he's doing, he's, he's, he's trying to, I don't know, trying to win the debate here, but I think it's pretty clear to everybody. I think I Virgin this blood one, yes. on the bedsheet is ridiculous. It is a scientific blunder. Jay is saying, okay, well, I just don't follow it today, but it's in your book and it should never be there. It wasn't right a thousand years ago and it's not right today. Women, many women don't have hymens. It can get ruptured from horseback riding, from whatever. Obviously, science today tells us there is no virginity test. That's ridiculous. Ah, but Allah, if you look in the Quran or in the Hadith, you will never find that Biblical blunder inside there. Now, you said that the Bible in Matthew, I think it's Matthew chapter 31, verse uh, 31 or something, uh, 1331, it says over there, the kingdom of heaven is like a, um, like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds. What? It is the smallest seeds to you? Jay said he's talking about the seeds which you guys know, that you guys are familiar with. We can look from the text here. It doesn't say anything like that. Jay, very quickly, will you disavow this verse, yes or no? I know I don't disavow this verse. I absolutely understand what Christ was saying at that time. That's a metaphor. How many times have we said that tonight? Have you noticed? You are still not listening to what we're saying. It's a metaphor for the people at that time. Eddie has said it. I have said it. Almost everybody who is watching this, I'm getting texts right now. They're laughing at you, Nadia. You don't really have much to talk about tonight but the mustard seed. Can you please now get to the material we've asked you about? Can you please answer the questions that Eddie and I have asked you, that the man who has just called you has asked? you can you to speak please talk about the sun and the moon following each other please get to this material you're running out of time okay so now as you can see um 
you know, he said, this is what all false religions will try to deceive you. They will try to deceive you into tricking you that uh, this is all metaphorical. Well, you know what? Two can play at that game. Yeah, you know, Jay, all that stuff you pointed about the sun and the moon following each other, that's all metaphorical. Let's all go home. There you go. Look, I can use his same wacky, quacky explanation to explain everything he's saying. But I noticed tonight, I'm not going to do that because... There, <laughs> that whatever he's presenting as scientific miracles can easily be explained. Now, when they say about the sun and the moon following each other, it all depends from which perspective you're talking about. If you're talking about from our perspective, absolutely. One day that you can look at the sun coming up, and then you look at the moon coming up. So it definitely, in that, from our perspective, it is for one is following the other. But if you look, but that, so the question tonight is really what perspective is the Quran speaking of? So now let's get back to the issue about he still cannot accept that bees eat uh, fruit. And this is the astonishing miracle of the Quran. Even people today don't know that. Now I'm going to quote you, honey, bee sweets, do bees eat fruit? Look what they say. The short answer, yes. Honey, bees, especially uh, in the nectar darth, find ripe fruit very much to their liking, end of quote. I can send you that. I also quoted him the citation that from the fruits, I'm sorry, that the, that the honey comes from the from the honey stomach. That I quoted you, the Guardian. I have my links. I can show it to you. Just read it right now. So brother, as you're, we can you're, see, your, your time is up. able to answer. Yeah. yeah, your time is up, brother. We appreciate you answering those, although we don't think it's a valid answer or you've even answered them. But the caller that had the heaven first and uh, then the earth. We, we, we got those verses. Uh, in Surah 79, 27, the heaven was made first and then the earth. In Surah 41, 11, the earth was made first and then the heaven. Which one is it? Because both cannot be synonymous. They cannot be working together with one flow. And please take one minute to answer that. And then we'll go to Brother Jay for his final statement. My final state, or we go back to you for your final statement, and then I'll make the final statement as well. So take one minute to answer that, please, for the sake of time. Okay, it was Surah 4111, and what was the other one? 7927. 79, okay, 27. Okay, so I got one minute. Uh, so let me very quickly say, the Surah 40, uh, 4111 says, Then he directed himself to the heaven while it was smoke, and said to it and to the earth. So right here we see it's not talking about which one was created first. So the whole argument <laughs> falls to pieces right here. Uh, Surah 79 verse 20, um, 79 verse 27 says, um, and which of you is more difficult creation? Is heaven, uh, I'm sorry, are, are you more difficult creation or is a heaven? Allah constructed, where's the contradiction? I don't see anything, but contradictions in the Quran or the Bible is a definitely a good them? topic. I think it's, is there yeah. is there any way you can read them in Arabic? Uh, you said you speak Arabic because I'm reading them in Arabic and it says exactly sure. what the caller was saying okay. as well. But if you could read them to yourself in Arabic, because sometimes for those that don't read Arabic, their Arabic is funny when they when they read the Quran or maybe sometimes misleading. And and uh, I don't want you to be embarrassed by any by any uh, chance there. So go ahead and read them to yourself in Arabic. We will go to Brother Jay for four minutes, his final statement, and then we'll come back to you. We'll give you four minutes to prepare an answer for that, and then you can answer it in one minute, and then take four minutes for your final statement. Dr. Jay? I, I do not want to have... Uh, sorry, Eddie, I'm not going to do a final statement, then have him uh, do after me. I, I'm sorry, if you could have him do his final statement, then I will end with the final statement. All right, go ahead. Nadir, did you want to give us a final statement? And uh, you can look that verse up, those verses up as well, because in the Arabic, they're saying exactly what that caller was saying. Okay, so let me start my... Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at it in the Arabic. There's nothing about... Chalaka, chalaka, which means to create. There's nothing like that in the verse. But this is off topics. Whether the Quran or the Bible contradict each other, it's a great topic. I would love to do that, but that is off topic. Really what we started to discuss here is where are the scientific errors inside the Quran? Uh, is, is the Quran a scientific miracle? We went off topic on what I debated 
in 2008. I'm sorry, Jay, if I wasn't able to answer your question, but as you can see, I had my plate full here to answer everything, and, I, and you guys almost had double time than what I had. But anyways, so we learned a lot today. We learned a lot from the Quran. Bees eat fruit. Go ahead and Google it. Do bees eat fruit? We learned that bees, that honey comes from the stomach of the bee. We learned that today. This is stuff which people even in today's world don't know. Now, I've presented my references to Jay. Uh, he just kept denying them. Well, I don't think it's like that. I don't think it's like that. But be rest assured, email me, na1971-1990 at gmail.com. I can present my references to you. Uh, but you can just Google the stuff yourself. Just type honey bee, I'm sorry, bee honey stomach, and you'll get so many references for that. I've already provided my reference for, for that from The Guardian. So four scientifically correct statements, back to back. One, two, three, four, sorry. A man in the desert 1,400 years ago cannot make those statements. Even if the stuff is observable or is mentioned in the past, if you're copying, well, then you're going to copy a lot of the blunders, blunders on the scientific errors if you're doing that. That's a very stupid thing to do. If you're doing your own research, 10 to 1 ratio of scientific errors for one correct statement. Four scientifically correct statements back-to-back -back proves the Quran is a scientific miracle. That's the first one. The second, the second uh, evidence which I've presented to you today. Astonishingly, the Quran corrects three scientific blunders of the Bible, embarrassments. The Bible says that the seed Mustard seed is the smallest seed planted in the ground. It didn't say the seed which you know of as J. Smith and uh, I believe Eddie mentioned. That's not what the Bible says. If the Bible said that, then my point is mute, of course. But I can be rest assured it does not say that. And you can you can learn more about it by just uh, Googling mustard, uh, smallest mustard, mustard, smallest seed Bible. Just put that in Google and you can read articles on it. Thank you, Nadir. We appreciate you being here once again, and we look forward to seeing you on some uh, future shows as well. Uh, Brother Nadir, you said that it's an embarrassing fact. I'm not embarrassed as a Christian. Dr. J, are you embarrassed today? Because uh, I'm not. These are not very well-known facts, and I wish that the Muslims would do the same thing that we're doing. We're quoting their own sources, their own tafsirs, to explain their own passages, yet he's going to go to... Google and he's going to look up his own understanding or an Islamic understanding of biblical scriptures. But Dr. J, give us your final four minutes and then I will take two minutes and we'll go from there. Yeah, I think it's been fascinating tonight. Uh, Nadir has claimed that he, and he will probably claim uh, tomorrow, that he has won this discussion because he has proved four scientific facts. I would like people who are watching to, to ask whether you think Nadir is correct. Uh, do you think that Nadir has uh, not only supported his evidence, he's using a Guardian article about the fact that there is a stomach called the honey stomach, and he believes, therefore, honey is made in the stomach. Uh, it does not come from the stomach. It comes from, everybody knows that honey comes from honeycombs. Uh, they, they, they bees bring the nectar to the honeycombs, and that's where the honey is produced. He then has spent almost an entire debate, an hour and a half, really coming down on the mustard seed, which had nothing to do with the debate today. Trying to claim a, a, a biblical error, and he's saying that this is, uh, and, and though, though we went over and over, said that this is a metaphor for that time, for the period of that time, so they would understand. He says, okay, uh, let me just use on the sun as an orbit in Surah 21, 33, and 36, 40, and 30, Surah 91, verse 1 and 2. I'll, I'll call that a metaphor. The very thing, thing that he won't accept from us, he is now using for his defense of the sun following the moon. I just caught him out on that. Fascinating how inconsistent Nadir is. Thank God we don't have to be inconsistent like this. Thank God we don't have that problem with the Bible. I'm so glad that I can trust this book. You pretty well, all those of you who have watched this debate tonight pretty well have seen that this book's got a lot of problems. We've not gone through a number of areas. Uh, he didn't even talk about the dark waters. He didn't talk. He really didn't understand the whole things with the, the, the different water, the different types of water and the barriers between the water. I think Eddie really helped him with the Arabic on that. But I'm not sitting here to quibble on that. He did. He certainly did not understand about the difficulty with the bees, even though he kept on repeating that I have got some source from a Guardian article. 
Uh, he, it's fascinating to me that Muslims have to spend so much time trying to find scientific proofs in the Quran. Why is it they're even asking this question? Have you heard Christians doing this? Do we need scientific proofs from the Bible to prove that this is authoritative? Do we even have any schools that go around uh, giving scientific proofs? I wanted to find out if this was so, and I did a bit of Googling today, and it's fascinating that I never took a course on scientific proofs of the Bible because there's no one even asked that question. It's not a question that should be asked because we have whole different criteria for the Bible as to whether we know its authority or not. Uh, a good paper written by Dr. Norman Geisler, and I can send it to you, Nadir, uh, this paper here, if anybody wants it, just ask the, the station, they'll send it to you. It goes and he go, shows through 11 different areas of how you need to read the Bible. And he talks about metaphors and he talks about similes and he talks about many different styles of writing that is not found in the Quran. Before you attack the Bible and you attack these, these scientific proofs, make sure that you understand what the author is saying. Make sure you understand the genre of that is being used. What is fascinating, however, I want to find out if there are scientific proofs in the Bible, and here's a whole page of scientific proofs in the Bible. We could have gone through this and spent another whole hour just on this. It's It's got hydrological proofs, it's got geological proofs, astron astronomical proofs, meteorological proofs, biological proofs, over 50 different proofs showing that these are scientific proofs that would not have been known at the time that the books that we're writing were written, and yet that's what Nadia has been trying to say all night tonight. Notice, I didn't even have to go to that in the Bible. But this proves to me that there is a real problem with the Quran. If Muslims are this desperate that they have to find these kind of proofs, and there's whole, uh, in ministries, they're working towards this, then there's something missing in the Quran that we don't have in the Bible. I wish you'd come back to this book. I wish you'd come back to the man behind this book. See, our Jesus does not lie. The, the Quran, the Bible does not lie. We don't even have this kind of debate. What I would really like to do with Nadir and somebody else is to go and actually ask the questions about how the Quran was put together, whether or not it really is from God or if it is from man. Now, I see I have my four minutes is up, and I'll stop there. It's been a good time. Thanks, Nadir. It's the first time I've met you. It's the first time I've even done a debate on this subject. Thank you for the time that you did spend. I don't think you, your conclusions are, are are held by most of the people that have watched this uh, discussion. It's been a good discussion. We've been even killed. Thanks, Eddie. You've done a great uh, time moderating. I didn't realize you were actually going to join in this debate. I thought it was just between Nadir and myself. But nonetheless, God bless you. You're an Arabic speaker, and you know the material a lot better than we do when it comes to Arabic. Listen, it's been a great time. God bless you all. This is Jay, over and out. Well, thank you guys for joining us. I wanted to say that if you want to learn the Quran, please try to go to the Arabic, as a lot of Muslims will tell you. Because really, when you read it in the English, it is deception at its best. It has been uh, really mistranslated. So when I went into these passages and I read in Arabic, he claims that he knows Arabic. He should have known exactly what I was talking about. So when I mentioned uh, the shooting stars as meteorites, or the meteorites as shooting stars that are shot at Satan, I went to chapter 67, verse 5, and in the Arabic, it says exactly that. When I went into chapter 55, verses 19 through 22, about the two seas not mixing together, fresh and water, uh, uh, I went into the tefsirs, fresh and water and salty water. I went into the tefsirs as well in the Arabic, and I was showing him exactly where this was and the word in Arabic so that he can look it up, or maybe he might know it. Any Arabic-speaking person would know if that is his native, native tongue that barzakh is the word of a land barrier. This is a land barrier, not it's still in water. This is a land between two waters. Uh, if we were to go to the understanding of how Satan and the shaitans, the, the, the demons right after him, were being brought forth to this life, it's literally Satan having sex with himself because he has a penis on the right thigh and a vagina in the left thigh, and he uh, brings forth kids. He lays eggs every single day, 10 eggs a day, and out of each egg, 70 shaitans females and shaitanas, or shaitanas females and shaitans males will come out. I mean, this is kind of the ridiculousness that we have to deal with, so we'll, we'll, we'll mention this to the Muslims. They ask us questions about uh, the, Quran, uh, the Bible. We'll mention what we believe. 
will actually interpret it for them because we're the Christians here. And yet they don't buy it. They want to believe in their own way. So he got stuck with the Palestinian seed, the mustard seed, but he couldn't show anything else. But we're trying to tell him, please don't go to that. Now we also tell him, get off of this topic and, and try to answer the questions. And we get no answer from that. And then in his own head, he says that we have submitted to him and his ideas. Really, we have not, and we've been saying this to you over and over again. I'm going to the Arabic over and over again. That's how I'm proving to you that I know exactly what this is saying. Yet you're going to the English, and the English is demolished. The English is taken away. What I have to say is this. When you read the Bible, there's a 99.6% accuracy in what it has to say. 99.6% accuracy in what it has to say. The rest of the errors that I'm talking about are not critical errors. There's commas or misplaced uh, letters here and there. They're not really so big. So why don't you go ahead and give the Bible a try and see if there are scientific proofs in the Bible and see if it is, uh, like Brother Jay had said, something that we actually have to defend we don't actually have to defend it. We don't have schools of thoughts on this. We don't have, even have schools that, uh, talking about scientific proofs of the Quran or of the Bible. But the Quran does, and we have to go to school to learn all these things. So, bottom line, I'd like to thank uh, Brother Nadir for coming on the show, uh, Dr. J for coming on the show as well. We look forward to hearing from you guys on some future episodes. This has been an episode of The Truth and Lies on the Trinity Channel. We thank you all for watching. God bless and have a good night.